welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm your host, Monica Weitzel. Today, we'll be talking with the Executive Director of the local nonprofit, Human Solutions, Andy Miller. Welcome, Andy. It's great to have you back on the show. Nice to be back, uh, albeit under different circumstances than uh, we've ever been on before. That, that's exactly right. You know, I imagine that with the um, incredible toll the COVID-19 uh, crisis has taken on not only human life but um, economic uh, our economy that you're probably pretty much overwhelmed with the you know getting uh, calls and requests from the people that you've all, always helped uh, so what can you tell us a little bit about what human solutions is doing um, that's new and 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 what you're doing that what are you still doing that you've always yeah. done so I will I will say um, like many uh, nonprofits in in our community We've uh, closed our doors and adapted our practices to comply with Governor Brown's executive order. Uh, at the same time, um, we are open for business. And, and as you uh, alluded to, our, uh, our reception lines are uh, overwhelmed with calls of, uh, from folks in need. Um, in many ways, it's business as usual for Human Solutions. We're addressing the lack of housing and economic security in our community. Uh, but in many ways, um, it is business as usual under the most unusual circumstances that we've ever had to operate under. Um, so many things have changed. Um, uh, our two shelters, uh, the Gresham Women's Shelter and Lilac Meadows, which serves families, both remain open uh, to comply with public health guidelines. We've um, moved uh, about half of the women out of our 90-bed women's shelter into the East Portland Community Center. Um, and that really allows folks to maintain the kind of social distancing um, that public health is requiring, uh, even uh, in a congregate shelter during uh, the times that we're in. Um, we've made a few other pivots. Uh, we have uh, typically a robust uh, team that is working to help people access employment opportunities. Those are fewer and farther between these days. Uh, so what that team has pivoted to do is to take calls from folks who are navigating the complex web of uh, applying many for the first time for unemployment benefits and the expanded federal unemployment, um, as well as helping folks who um, maybe aren't um, in the IRS system in, in the ways that will help them deliver uh, the federal stimulus checks in the most expedited fashion. So we're helping right. folks navigate the IRS portal um, and make sure that um, the folks in our community are receiving those funds that they're entitled to. That, that's great to hear because uh, people that have perhaps never had to go on unemployment are, are now on unemployment and people that, um, and people maybe that are, that are houseless right now um, wanting to get that stimulus check yet, yet not having an, a, maybe an address to, to send it to. Those kind of things are, are difficult to know how to handle. So knowing yeah. there's somebody there that can kind of take your hand and help them through it is really huge. Um, yes. Yeah, it's difficult times, that's for sure. A couple other things that we're doing that are, uh, that are new, uh, as all of the local school districts um, implement distance learning, uh, we have a LearnLinks team that is uh, making sure that uh, folks are getting uh, Chromebooks uh, or other technology from the districts to enable the, uh, the kids to continue um, through the distance learning port portals that the school districts are making available. Um, we're providing some online tutoring for folks. Um, uh, we're also uh, have, uh, as we've always had, uh, a community that is housing insecure. So folks uh, are struggling to make the rent every month. Um, those struggles just got a lot harder as uh, many are losing employment income. Um, at the same time, there are some new renter protections. There's a, now a statewide and countywide moratorium on evictions, and this can be confusing to folks. Um, on the one hand, you won't get evicted. On the other hand, um, rent that's not paid now will be due at, uh, within the next, I believe it's six to 12 months The moratoriums are shifting. But we're helping folks understand those rules, um, make good decisions about the income they are receiving, uh, applying them to the variety of expenses that, uh, that we all have, our housing, our utilities, uh, making sure our, our kids are fed, 
um, uh, getting to medical appointments. Um, so we're really helping with all of those things uh, all the time, maintaining uh, safe social distancing and uh, helping not only the community manage this crisis, but um, our 130 employees, they're also managing the crisis too. Many of them are parents um, of young children, so they're doing double duty. They're working, they're working at home, two jobs. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it can be a bit much sometimes having, yeah. you know, having the kids at home and trying to work and maybe you know, two parents doing it. Yeah, it's, it's overwhelming for a lot of people. Um, it, it's, it's interesting. I know there has been a lot of confusion about the, about the rent moratoriums and mortgage moratoriums because people think, oh, do I get this? Do I, am I getting a free pass for a couple of months or is it going to catch up with me and, and bite me later? So, yeah, knowing how to navigate that is, is huge. Uh, so how are you keeping funded then? Because I know you had a big gala that was planned for next month. Yeah. So um, it's our biggest fundraiser of the year it was scheduled for um, May 2nd. Uh, and we were super excited about it, building toward uh, a Wizard of Oz theme. The gala was entitled There's No Place Like Home, uh, which really resonates with our mission of helping people find and keep their homes um, so uh, we had a lot of uh, a lot of help and volunteers working on this uh, once a year event. Unfortunately, like again, many of our uh, partner nonprofits um, to comply with the uh, conditions of COVID-19, we've postponed that gala a year. So uh, hang on everyone, we're gonna deliver the same wonderful event, but it'll be a year from now, a year That's from good. this May. Yeah, I mean, it's was, it was a great theme. I love that theme. So I hope you yeah. use that next oh, year. And it's, yeah. it's going to be fabulous. Um, so uh, to make up for that, uh, we are um, reaching out to our community and our donors um, because the services that we provide are needed now more than ever. Uh, and at the same time, we are uh, having, to, having to cancel or postpone our biggest fundraiser of the year. Um, in steps the Oregon Community Foundation, the Ed Cadero Fund, that has agreed to match uh, up to $25,000, all contributions that come in during this COVID-19 period to support our work. Um, so we're asking all of our supporters and donors and people in the community, I think everybody is looking for, how can I help? And really, um, one of the best ways you can help us achieve our mission uh, is to log on to our website, humansolutions.org, uh, and you'll see right up front uh, a link to enable you to share in this incredible spring campaign and help us achieve our goal of raising $25,000. That'll be matched dollar for dollar by the Ed Cadero Fund. Um, we're about halfway to our goal, and because uh, the community has been incredibly generous in stepping up at a time. Uh, when we need it most, and we're just hoping that others will come out and, and join this important fundraising event. Good, good. Well, I hope people will do that. And I do hear that a lot. You know, what, where is my help needed most? What can I do? Sometimes people are doing things on a personal level in their neighborhood. Sometimes people have the means to to do more and and to donate money or or whatever. But um, we all need our we all need help, and and I think that's a great way to do it. Yeah. And, you know, we've had some great, uh, great support through this. We had a need for, um, for masks, for uh, face masks for our staff, uh, courageous staff that's out there doing heroes work in our shelters. Uh, and the community stepped up and I think we had over 300 handmade masks donated in a very short period um, and are now getting a pretty steady supply of donated masks. Uh, the other big need that we see in the community uh, is, is for food. Um, we partner with a lot of the local food banks and are helping our housing residents. It's over 700 families uh, access uh, local food pantries and food banks. Um, and then, of course, our two shelters rely almost exclusively on uh, donated meals. And um, if you're interested in helping on that front, again, you'll see on our website um, a quick link that you can help. Uh, donate a meal to either our own shelter, our family shelter, or both. Um, and if I could mention a, a, a fabulous partnership that's emerged out of all of this. Um, uh, we, we did some brainstorming again. Um, we, our shelters typically rely on donated meals. Uh, and many of the folks who are regular donors, uh, for a variety of reasons under the pandemic, um, were less able to donate. 
um, constriction of resources on their own end, uh, or it was just too difficult or not safe for them to be going out and uh, gathering the supplies. We use a, rely on a, a faith-based network and uh, many of the folks are seniors and at risk. And so we understood that some of those donations contracted. At the same time, we saw a lot of our favorite restaurants out in East Portland and East Multnomah County really suffering uh, during this pandemic. And so working with uh, one of our partner nonprofits, the Rosewood Initiative um, and Prosper Portland as a funder, uh, we developed this win-win uh, through which Prosper Portland provided uh, funding for our three small uh, enterprises that are uh, restaurants in East Portland. Um, to provide boxed meals uh, that would be delivered to our shelters and provide uh, homeless women and families with needed dinners three nights a week. So um, it's a win for us because uh, the food arrives, it's delicious, it's hot, it's fresh, it's restaurant quality food. Um, it's a win for the restaurants because they have uh, at least this small source of revenue to keep them in business and meals to provide uh, and it's just a win for the community because it's yeah. it's it's keeping the channels of commerce open in East Portland. So we're real happy to to see that come together. I like to see that too, and it's keeping their uh, the restaurant employees working too. So yeah, Correct. it's it's all around a really good deal. I hope yeah. that uh, you know that there will be more of those kind of partnerships. We're, it's amazing. We're looking, yeah, yeah, we're looking to expand that right now with the city of Gresham. We're in discussions with some real good folks within the city of Gresham to see if they don't have some small business funding for some Gresham area restaurants to also yeah. participate in this initiative. Good, good. That's, that's, that's the kind of thing that we need during these times is people to think creatively and out of the, outside the box and figure out ways that everybody can, you know, thrive and, or, yeah. or survive at least and, and uh, get along. Yeah. And I, you know, I won't be the first to say this and I won't be the last, but I think, you know, what we're seeing in this pandemic uh, is really a two sides of a coin. Uh, on the one hand, we're seeing exposed some of the challenges out there in our community and our society, frankly, uh, and seeing communities of color and people at the lowest end of our income ladder um, profoundly impacted, not only by the health impacts of COVID-19, which are disproportionately affecting in particular the African-American community, but most communities of color, but also the economic impacts. Uh, many folks uh, who are uh, barely getting by before, who were barely getting by before COVID-19 were working in the service sector of the economy. Uh, and as we all know, that's almost been decimated uh, by the closures that were necessitated to maintain public health. Um, so, um, you know that those are the that's the hard news the good side of the coin is we are seeing the community step up we're seeing um, donations begin to increase uh, from people who have the means uh, even under the pandemic to um, make a difference and uh, we're seeing volunteers and just a kind of community-based spirit um, if there's nothing that this pandemic uh, if there's one thing i think that this pandemic has taught us is that when we understand what we need to do for the greater good of all, we're able to do it. Um, and uh, we're really hopeful that that spirit can carry over beyond the pandemic and really impact um, how we recover from it. And um, more than recovery, uh, we, we believe that we need a reset in how we approach these issues going forward. Um, we, we can't have the sector of society that was as vulnerable as it is to the pandemic and the economic impact uh, continue to be that vulnerable uh, as we recover and reset. So we're doing quite a bit of advocacy on that front uh, locally at the state level and even with our congressional delegation. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. It, it really does uh, give us all a chance to pause and kind of yeah. take stock of our lives and see, you know, figure out really what's important and, and try to, you know, even up some of the some of the you know the inequities in our in our world so um yeah let's try yeah. to find that silver lining where we can i guess huh it's true and you know it's very much uh, uh you know we we rewrote our mission statement a few years ago uh, instead of focus instead of talking about building pathways out of poverty which really puts the burden of that work on the individual mm -hmm. um we are countering the forces that are causing poverty yeah. and homelessness and economic insecurity 
um, and those forces are massive and, and um, uh, entrenched by by decades of history. Uh, I like your 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 phrasing. This is a time to pause, and um, we think that um, this is this is a historic moment uh, in, in the United States and really in the world. We're all united uh, on one cause, and that's to minimize the impact of of this virus. Um, and I think what we are about to transition to, I hope, is th that we remain united in a cause of rebuilding and resetting our economic system uh, in a way that corrects for the injustices and the inequities that um, make uh, some communities within our greater society more vulnerable, uh, not only to the health impacts, but to the economic impacts. Very well said. Couldn't agree more. Thank you, Andy. Is there anything else that you want to share about human solutions or? or? I, I just want to encourage anyone in the community who's seeing this, who knows someone who is in need uh, or is un wanting to understand how to access uh, housing or unemployment benefits or uh, is food insecure, to give us a call. 503-548-0200 uh, uh, is our main line number. Uh, we have some fabulous front desk folks that are answering uh, our phones uh, at their homes uh, safely, but are able to provide uh, great information and referral out to the community. Um, you know, if you know someone who's at the risk of homelessness, or if you are someone out there who is wondering, am I going to get evicted? Um, I can't pay my rent. Give us a call and uh, we'll try to get you to someone who can help. And if it's not us, uh, we're able to refer you outside to uh, community resources that may be able to help if we can't. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks for all the work you're doing and to all of your staff at Human Solutions for the incredible work. You, you call them heroes in the field and, and that's what they are. Yeah. They, they really are. And uh, you know, if I could, could say uh, a quick kudos to our team of 130 employees, um, the resilience and, and adaptability that they've shown through this crisis um, have just been incredible. Uh, folks are, who are typically meeting with people in person are now calling them at home just to check in. Uh, we've done some quick Zoom meetings with residents in our housing. Um, the, the fear, the loneliness, uh, the, the sense of hopelessness um, that frankly each of us I think have probably felt through these weeks of, of uh, social distancing is uh, being felt profoundly in the community that we serve and support. Uh, but I'm just so amazed at our staff and they are all about relationships and connecting and partnering with, um, with the people with whom we partner. And uh, while everything around us has changed, uh, that's one thing that hasn't changed one bit. And I'm just so proud of our team. And you should be, you should be. Thank you to them and to you and, and um, we'll get through it together. Well said. Thanks thank for having you. us back, Monica. Yes, thank it's you. It's always a pleasure much. to be here. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure for me too. And thanks for to our viewers for watching. To all of you at home uh, from Metro East and all of our staff, please be safe, be healthy. Till next time. Bye.